Well, after a couple of really gloomy days and a lot of cold nights that froze the corn just a little bit, but it'll pull through just fine. The sun is trying to poke out here this morning. We're supposed to get a bunch of heat this week. I'm gonna take this 8410RX over to Midwest Machinery in Glenwood. I'm gonna drop that exact emerge planter off and pick up a 2660 VT tool. Then I'm gonna head up the road to my buddy's farm. We're gonna drop that thing in the ground and see what kind of horsepower this thing has, see what it'll do. <laughs> This VT tool situation is going to work exactly the way it does with this tractor where Midwest Machinery doesn't really have a lot to do with this other than providing the service for it. This machine is coming right from John Deere just like this tractor did because you guys watch this. So again, thank you for that and this time I'm excited to take this tractor and the VT tool over to my buddy's place, see what they think, get another farmer's perspective of what this machine will do and see what they think of it. It could be a long day. I hope I didn't forget lunch. Oh, we're good. What the heck? I think those were tractors. All right, we are hooked. Sam's gonna follow me in his Dodge Ram Classic Edition. We're gonna head about 10 miles up the road and see what we got going on. All right, we got the convoy ready, locked and loaded, northbound and down. Had to swing by my buddy Jake's here right on the way. It's his field that we're headed to. He's got a 2680H, which is the high speed disc. And he's gonna have that at the field as well, pulled by, I believe it's a 9570 he's got hooked to it right now. We're gonna go compare the two and let Sam try and sell us on him. Okay, good, because the camera's rolling. Six. All right, we're good. We're good? Oh, wait. We got to triangulate? Properly distance. All right. Now that we have properly triangulated to a six foot radius? Diameter. Diameter? Radius from you. It's an equilateral triangle anyway. I got it's Sam, tillage man Sam's out here. He's going to run us through everything, make sure that Jake and I aren't screwing stuff up. This is my buddy Jake. Jake and I race race cars against each other. I've known him forever. If you listen to Off the Husk podcast, he's been on there once. once. All right. Well, Holy not. Holy <laughs> Sam's been on there too, but we're gonna see if we can screw some stuff up here today. I don't know how to hold the camera. You guys ready? I'm ready. ready. All right. <laughs> hold on here, Sam. Hold on. Hold. Hold. That can't be six inches. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Sam got a different tape measure than I do. Rolls it nice though. It does, yeah, we're going 10 4 Should we see if we can get it up more? Uh, it's trying. <laughs> no, about 10, 10, 10, 4 is about what it wants. How fast did you plan it? 10, <laughs> yeah, 9 to 10. <laughs> What are you trying to get to? About three inches? You set that at three, okay? Three inches, and we try to get it the top two inches stirred in because we're trying to stir in that prowl. Yep. Um, so it's, but it's, I mean. These are nice conditions. So I guess I, I'm looking to think, okay, you know, how much dry dirt do you see on top? Right, you know, not, yeah, not that much. Not that much, I mean, you got little, but it's mixing nice. Sam, we had it, uh, what did we have that? Four or five degrees of gang five angle? Degrees, five degrees. It was pulling 10 to 10 and a half. So no problem. 
It didn't want to do. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> didn't want to do much more than that. Piece of cake. <laughs> and that is a 3310. 3310. Almost 34 feet wide. So Running three 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 ish deep, I'd say we are now. Yeah. So I, and it's kind of it's tough to gauge that for sure because you're running in a field that was worked once. Sure. Yeah. So you got to kick around a lot to check it. But as far as horsepower for this machine, it's going to vary that much. You know, for seed bed, this is just fine. But if right. you're going in the fall, 12 degrees, four and a half inches deep, yeah. it's going to be tough for a yeah. 410 to, to pull. It's going to want more power. Yeah. So it should be. You said like two and a half. Two and a half is you know where it should be, but it's going to change based on your hitch height and stuff like that from the tractor side. So that's why we make it adjustable, right? Right. Right. Yeah. We better fix that. So we have to adjust the fore and aft on the true set to get this thing going correctly because we're digging way too deep with the back compared to the front. So, should be able to go down here. Push, push this. And then, where's the disc on that one? Do you think it was three? Three five? Three. Okay. And then we want to increase angle to seven eight. Yeah. Four aft we were gonna go. Well, I just went one way because it would only let me go that way. <laughs> right behind you. See, I got I got my whole days in there. Oh, Funyuns, Monster Energy. <laughs> you don't think of that as much. <laughs> Hold on, let's see what she'll do. That slowed us down. <laughs> seven, seven. I would do. Now let's go to seven degrees. We're still about eight miles an hour. Eight miles an hour. Yeah. Feel that little chatter? Uh huh. It's in the belts. Look at those belts back there. It is. Yeah. If you go faster, it totally goes away. Really? Yeah. Or slower. So right at this. Six to eight when I was planting it would do it, but below six, above eight, no problems. Let me put my gloves on. Can't yeah, I was talk. just going to ask you if you got new gloves. I can't talk safely without gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that again. Jake asked a good question. The pressure's on the basket. The pressure on the basket is it is it individual or are they together or and then you can if you raise them up you they both they all raise up at the same time. They both raise up at the same time, but this basket and that basket are on the same circuit. But if you wanted to lift the back one up and keep the front one down, we have a collar here that you can you lift them up, lock that rear one up, and keep the front one down. Because oh, this sure. one, this one's the rumbler and this one's the crumbler, right. and this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bebop and rock steady. <laughs> uh, this one is breaking up the ridges that come through the blades. Sure. So that's the main design of this one is this thing comes down and hits like this. Yep. And that busts out ridges. And then this one's your standard, you know, crumbler basket that's breaks up the clumps and stuff sure. like that. Yep. So that's why we have two. So do you this is what you would call a full-on double basket all the way? It's a double basket <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Still about that eight. eight. It sped us up a little bit. So do you set the speed so that bottom you have orange, that's eight six, so that's the speed you want? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the speed. So I can dial that up here and then the transmission's trying to get there as efficiently as it can. Sure. But it yeah. can't get up here. Yeah. So then if I dial it back to eight, because that's what it wants, it quits trying so hard. Sure. What if we when we can turn when we turn around, what if we bump that disc?
Yeah, yeah, it takes power, that's for sure. I was surprised by that last fall too, but that 2680, same thing. I can't believe how hard those actually pull. Well, that's how, how fast will you pull that with that? 10. Yeah, and that's a 33 foot? 30. 30, okay. 30, and that, I mean, you really don't even know what's going on. Oh, it has more than enough? Yeah. 8 to 8 and a half is where we're at right now. You probably want to keep that gang angle in so that it mixes. I think so. Yeah. Because we are moving quite a bit of dirt. Right. You know, in my opinion. Yep. Oh Pivot. boy. Let's see if I can wreck some. Steering wheel? Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at the steering wheel. All the way up? Yep. Let it rip. One down? Yep, you gotta click it into detent as it's moving to get the true set to activate. Okay. Yep. Alright, there we go. So then you can dial it up just like on a sure. IVT transmission. Yep. I think I had it at eight six eight eight. It seems like if you if you try and force it up, you do get more speed out of it. God, you sit high. Yeah, I think they, I think you just I guess I've been sitting in it for a few weeks, sure. so I'm used to it. But but it is definitely higher than something on tires. And then uh, this seems wide open. Yeah, visibility is pretty awesome. No, you can't see much. This is our first trip when we were a little more shallow yet. Correct, yep. Yeah. Then when you get to the end, you, you, you just roll back on this. That's what I've been doing, yeah. Sure. Because then I keep it in that F1. Does your 9570 have that? It does. Yeah, so then I yeah. just keep it in F1 and by just adjusting the clicker to slow down. Sure. Uh, got, pegs are nice. It's got a triple peg. It's got one over there, so when you pivot the seat over. Ah! Oh, 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 there it is. Wow. Oh, hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Let's make sure. Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Enjoy. <laughs> Don't look at me when that's going on. Good lord. You know, I sat one of these. Uh, Christy and I sat one of these at a. Uh, air down the cities and it actually hurt but you could sit this one all day. It, it, it hurt it, in it that hurt one? Because it, it was so like, it was, I don't know. It was too, too much? Too much, but this is perfect. Well, you can adjust the pressures. Oh, you can? Oh, sure, yeah. Oh. Let's try, I, I think anyway, I didn't mess with it much. Is that more or less? We're going to quit. No, nope, it's, still, it's still running. I think less. That's what I was, yeah, so I think two. I had it. I think I had it. I had the massager cranked. <laughs> How often did you run that? The massaging seat? Yeah. Like, I, I'd always forget about it, so not very often. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't really think about it. Yeah, it's not that often where I'm like, oh, yeah, I gotta turn the seat back on. I can't on. wait to get into my massaging chair. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find the happy ending button, though. No. <laughs> There's plenty of rope. It doesn't work. There's plenty of rope. <laughs> yeah, so here's our two passes. Right. They didn't look much different. Uh-uh. But that one, no, you can't, you don't have a lot of adjustability, right? No, just the depth. Just the depth. Yeah. But it's also really simple, that machine. Yeah. Are you planning on running it a bunch this fall? I think so. Like, we'll do, like, uh, we talked about, like, we're going to do any, like, corner corner. We like to do corner corner near here, you know? Yep. Um, we'll choose a plow and then run that in the spring. And okay. That should really Your guys always chase you around in their trucks all day long. <laughs> they could at least bring us lunch. So we're just looking at and, and discussing the differences between the two, and we feel like the 2680 over there that they're running, it's a little bit, little bit firmer on the seed bed, probably because of the big rubber basket in the back instead of the double basket open style like this has. There's a little more, a little more mixing, turning over a little more dirt because of the concavity of the blades on that. Hopefully I can get over and run in that a little bit for a few minutes, but um, 
This does more of a chopping style, a little more fluffier seed bed here, would you say? Yeah, a little more fluffier, but I, residue-wise, it's about the same. And this, it doesn't as far as what's on top what's there on for top? the residue, yeah. yep. yep. Uh, push. I'm guessing it's a light for something. <laughs> Probably find out when it gets dark out. All right, Sam, we're moving to the 2680. Give me and like two dozen other people your pitch on what the difference is between this machine and that one. How long do you want me to go for? Ah, uh, like 12 30, seconds. 30, I'll give you 30. Okay. So our VT is gonna be that, you know, more chopping and sizing. So, you know, as far as chopping and sizing goes, there's really nothing that's gonna beat the VT. The high speed disc is gonna be a little more aggressive. So we're gonna turn over a little bit more dirt. That's our residue management. So both of them are residue management tools. This one's gonna bury a little bit more. The, the VT is gonna chop and size a little bit more. So this machine has no adjustment other than depth, but the discs on it are are more. There's more concavitation. Yeah. So yeah. The, the cavitization. The cavitization uh, of the blade. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really not so much the concavity of the blade as it is the angle that it's running through the ground. So our VT is at a max of 12, so we go 0 to 12 degrees. This is going to be up front, it's going to be 17 degrees, in the back it's 14 degrees. Okay, and then you've obviously got a different basket system on this. This is not the full-on double basket all the way. This is no, a standard basket. This is just one big, uh, it's like 70 rubber bicycle tires stacked in a row. Yeah. It does a nice job. And so, yeah, this one's gonna be like, uh, this is gonna be more likened for if you're using this for seed bed prep, because it's gonna leave it firm, it's gonna have constant ground contact, so it leaves a really nice seed bed. So there you can see a little bit better on the on the rolling basket and the and the concavity of the blades. Tizations. Yeah, this is your rig, you handle this one. A cooler? What, do you not have a fridge? <laughs> yes, we don't have a fridge. Nothing. I know, I know. What kind of millennial are you? <laughs> so much less visibility here, huh? I know. That's pretty crazy. So much less visibility. What a horse. So you run this at 10? Obviously it's got more power and traction than you need, but. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, get her up to 10. I should actually try that F1 deal with this thing. Or else go like this. So you got F1 full throttle right now? I have F. I have F1 full throttle right now at 10 miles an hour. Yeah, there you go. So then it should, yeah, see it'll shift up and throttle back for you to try and to try and get more efficiency out of it. We're causing a little more dust. <laughs> a little bit. It is dustier back there. <laughs> One thing I don't like about running F1 and, and uh, in this, when I'm doing, when we're doing these high speed ones, is that, that gear from 12 to 13, it shifts rough. It shifts rough. So, I recently learned, I don't know about individual gearing, but at least on that tractor, if this is the same transmission, yeah. you can adjust that. You can. Yeah, you can adjust the droop, but I haven't done it yet. But I did, I did get a handy video clip sent to me of how to do it. Whoa, full on double deers all the way. Take it easy, Sam. This is a rated G channel. Don't get so worked up over this double tillage thing. The dirtiness of it is what I like. <laughs> all right, I'm back in the saddle of the 8RX here pulling the 2660. I've got a few acres in this north end to finish off for Jake. He's over there finishing up some headlands. We're gonna fold up and get out of here, but I'm gonna spend some time here myself without anybody in here kind of comparing how this thing runs with some tillage behind it, putting a load behind it compared to what it does with a planter, because a planter is pretty easy to pull. Overall, I'd say both of these tillage tools do pretty much what you'd expect. They do a pretty good job of chopping up and eating up the residue. You can set the uh, adjustment on this one for how aggressive or non-aggressive you want it as far as the angle of the, of the gains. 
and you can you can really change really just how aggressive you want to get whether you just want to slice stuff or you really want to move some dirt you can adjust all of that it's got the double baskets on the back it does have a true set here so it will maintain the depth uh, you can change your gang angle from in here you can change your basket pressure your fore and aft your wing pressure you can change all that and it actually adjusts that for you on the go to make sure that it's all good so true set is one thing that works out really really nice this machine does have that that 2680 that they're running at least that machine does not have true set on it uh, that one's got a lot less adjustability again though it does a really good job of chopping things up and leaving the field really nice and smooth behind it so uh, both of them pretty good tools as far as how the tractor handles this one this is almost 34 feet wide behind me uh, and we've got it set up about a medium aggressiveness I'm going 9.2 miles per hour right now kind of what you'd expect you know this this tractor I got to turn so this tractor is 410 horsepower which as you would expect on this machine 410 horsepower it's enough to do what we're doing here today you know, and, I, and I'm going nine to nine and a half right now, and it's pretty smooth in here. You don't feel like you're moving that fast. But I think ideally, if you were going to pull this machine with this tractor, I think you'd want to go a little bit narrower on this machine and not have a 34-foot machine. It just seems like it, if you want to get 10, 11 miles an hour out of it, you'd maybe want to step up in, in tractor, or you'd want to go smaller on the on the implement. But for what we're doing here today, it's working great. I also have a lot less vibration in the belts. I talked about that a little on the planter. There was like a harmonic vibration in the tracks at a certain speed. It's still got a little bit of that, but I almost, I don't know if I would notice it if I wasn't trying to pay attention and feel for it. Overall, again, the tractor's just super quiet, rides really smooth. It's got a heck of a cab suspension under it, so the cab can move around, eat up a lot of that. Oh, that reminds me, my seat massager. It turns off after a certain time period and sometimes you forget about it. That does it for the field other than the headlands. Jake is back there finishing those up right now. I'm gonna pull out of here and head back to Midwest. Heck of a view from the edge of this field. Gotta love all the lakes in this area of Minnesota. Minnesota's got a lot of lakes and we are in an area of Minnesota that has a lot of lakes. So we have a lot of lakes. touch all those icky hoses. I'm a millennial. Toodles. <laughs> Toodles. My dealer's got a cooler view than your dealer. Looks like dad did a little cleaning around here while I was gone. Looks good. Rumor has it there's a grill, some thought out beef, and some cold cans of stuff that I like waiting for me in the backyard so that's a day for me I'm gonna watch this Sun go down and enjoy the backyard with the family thanks again to everybody that watches this that's the reason that I get to do this awesome stuff thanks again to Sam and to Jake the Wildman crew out there for letting us come out there and do some filming on their ground and harass them a little bit that's all I got Millennial Farmer out <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of a project Onyx has going on here, but it appears as though he removed the back seats from his little sister's power wheels. Atta boy.